Yeah, there. Hi, Jody here. I am trying to learn to play an old banjo solo, a banjo piece of music called A Footlight Favorite. It was composed by Emil Grimshaw and definitely over a hundred years ago because there's a recording made in 1905 by John Pitto playing a version of this. Um, there's a later one, 1922, by Shirley Spaulding. She was 23 years old herself when she recorded it. And these recordings, they differ from each other. And both of them differ in certain ways from the printed score, at least the one that I have. This is the only one I've ever seen. And they both play it fast. So, I mean, the, the, their speed is... Um, like that. But I'm not going to play it like that in this video because I don't know it yet. I'm just learning it. Right, and I'll make mistakes. Even at a moderate pace, I'll make mistakes. So, uh, there's an intro. Shirley Spaulding plays the intro as written. John Pitto does not. Then there's the first part of the piece. John Pitto adheres to the written score I have. And Shirley Spaulding does not. So, it's written like this. So if I was going to play it as written, the first decision is what fingers to use in the right hand. If I just use two fingers at a certain point, I'm going to have to double up. So I got to get my third finger in there. trying to work out how to do that. Uh, it's really not much of a problem. Then it goes up high. This to me seems like the best way. Each note on its own string. As opposed to... It, it's indicated that the, that G is an open fifth string. So... This is really the only flowing way I can think of. But then the next note is a single E. I could get it here or here. Or from the sound of the recordings, I think both of them yeah, are getting it here. They would have probably fingered it like this. I play my C chord like this. And it's written like this. Single, chord, 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 chord. And Shirley Spaulding does it note, chord, note, chord, chord. And then it's written like this. So the fifth string is the last note in the phrase before this D seventh chord. So the melody is descending. Yeah. 
But she doesn't play it that way. She plays an open first string, a D, so the melody ascends. It's prettier. And then again she goes, note, chord, note, chord, chord. Do I want to do that or I'd want to do as Pitto does in the way Grimshaw supposedly wrote it? I'm still making up my mind. I don't know. So what have we got? Myself. She also doesn't do this. No. <laughs> she goes. And sometimes. Is that deliberate? doesn't make sense to me in that context. That suggests an E chord. The A twice sounds a bit better to me. One time she does a triplet. Something like that. I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, there's a this. She gave a description of the recording session that, which I can summarize as, I was scared to death. Um, so it's possible that some of what she played was just because of nerves and forgetting to breathe. Um, but I have these two beginnings, and I'm, I don't know just which I like better. Hard to play neat. It's easier to play the A flat. So, after this, we have an E, a single E note before the chords begin. I could get it here. I could get it there by making this chord. That's pretty flowing. I could then get the C chord like this, but it sounds choked. And I can tell on the recording that it's down here. It, it, there's the open G string rings. I could get E here. Hmm. I can get that. Okay, so now it's written like this. She does this. She puts in one more D. Thumb index middle, thumb index middle. She does this. Uh, something like that. That's how it's written. I think they both do that, but I misheard it one time as uh, How in the world will I get that? I thought I'd go like this. But then I was wrong. 
but it makes a viable variation. So now we now have, how do I finger that? That's one way. I could go back to this. That's kind of convenient because I have the same the same car horn chords. Traffic jam sound. Or should it be all staccato? Now I know that Pitto was doing this because I can hear him lift his finger and the open B string sounds. Um, as far as I've gotten. Uh, next video I'll talk about the intro and then and part two. There's also a question about what fingers to use in the, in the Spalding variation. You see if I go I can't just use a thumb and index. Because I'm ending up with the index. And now I have to I have to use the index on the open B string for this. So the third finger has to come in. See? Constantly changing the fingers better for flow. None of this, what I'm telling you, is internalized yet for me. I just thought it might be interesting for some other banjo players to see how this banjo player decides how to play a tune. Maybe. Bye.